Hi there, thanks for checking out our channel. Um, this is a uh, testing video and a little bit about this unit. This is on uh, this particular model. This is an International Super 98. Uh, this is an old unit, um, a good unit though. Um, solid state uh, unit, not load impedance. Um, anyways, we, we uh, repaired the board inside this unit and replaced the bad output transformer in it. Um, not a lot of parts available for the thing, so you have to rebuild the boards that are inside of them. And I've got a stack of uh, transformers uh, that are solid state style that work great in these things. A little retrofitting has to be done uh, on them to make them work. But once you get them bolted in and in place, they work like a dream. So if you've got a solid state unit that your transformer is bad in it, I've got some here. The only thing is knowing how to wire them up correctly and um, knowing how to make them fit in your case correctly. You know, not all solid state units have the same amount of room. This one has a lot of room inside of it. So, but anyways, um, if you uh, you want to check out our, our website, I'll put a link down in the description area, but it's fencerfixer.com and fencer is spelled just like this and then fixer is F as in Frank. I X E R, but we work on all brands of all ages of, of electric fence boxes. I mean, this one's probably from the night oh, 1970s, 80s. That's when they kind of ran their time with them. They had internationals around before that, and actually, international was around after this model was discontinued. Um, they international eventually got bought up by, by Zariba and the Woodstream group of, of, of uh, brands. Um, back in the 80s, maybe the, in that, probably the 90s, um, when Zareva got their hands on them and they were making units and everything, since International was still a recognized brand name of electric fence boxes, uh, Zareva was taking some of their own units and then slapping a sticker on there that said International whatever uh, model, but they were putting the Zareva guts on the inside so that way they could try to... Uh, you know, keep the brands going uh, that people still recognize, even though they weren't technically the same brand. You know, they were just bought by the, by another brand, and they did that with uh, Bulldozer and Dyna Charge and uh, Blitzer. Blitzer's actually still around, um, but they're under the Zareba umbrella as well. Um, but anyways, if you've got one of these units, you would like us to try to work on it for you. We'd be happy to take a look. Uh, we don't charge you anything for looking at them. We'll give you a free quote and an 18-month warranty on everything that is sent into us for repair that we do repair. And that covers uh, lightning damage as part of our warranty. Uh, we don't cover water damage, bugs getting inside of a unit, or mishandling of some kind. Um, and, uh, and all that kind of fun stuff. But anyways, uh, let's plug this unit in. Plugged in. I don't have it, my switch turned on for the power bar, but I'm going to hook my tester on there. Got to be kind of careful with these solid state units, especially with like little rubber uh, boots like that. If you got a thin spot in there, these things, these solid state ones, and sometimes bite you through the insulation. They got a lot of a lot of juice behind their shock. But I'm going to turn it on. Put that a hell of a shock. You can see the voltage is nice and high. Um, that's what's nice about these solid state units. They put out a hell of a charge. Um, the downside of them is they don't hold a load hardly at all. So you get much grass growth on them. And they won't run a huge, huge long run of fence. Um, I mean, they'll run some, of course, but they, you know, you couldn't do 300 acres with this thing. It just didn't have the power behind it to go. You know, it doesn't have a, the capacitive discharge kind of design that, like the Loeb and Peden's Gallagher and Speed Rights and even the current Zariba stuff and the Parmac stuff is all, everybody's gone to uh, Loeb and Peden's because that's, you know, you just get more power at the end of the line and you can fight through the longer, a longer runs with it and you can, um, uh, fight the shorts better, but we'll do a spark jump here with this. I'm going to get a different wire instead of using a screwdriver I'm going to get um, this little lead here I'm going to clamp onto the ground side 
and then I'm gonna get really close to the hot side and you'll see I'm gonna actually gonna grab it with a pair of needle nose. I don't want to get bit through the insulation by accident. So I'm gonna get real close to it. I mean I can probably I'll, I'll probably be able to get about that far away and it might still shoot a spark. Alright, clicking. Look how far away I am and it shoots a spark. I mean, I gotta, you know, probably half an inch, half inch, three quarter inch, I don't know, quite a bit of space there. And look at the spark this thing will jump. So these things are hard hitting. Um, I believe the Dynacharge 909 is the same exact on the inside as one of the Super 98s. And they made a bunch of variations. And this is probably one of the later versions of it because it actually has an actual circuit board in it. The old, older ones had like these little like seven terminal strip things that, that kind of ran like this, you know, but like like this and he had like little wires jumping across components jumping across the different paths and instead of having an actual circuit board thing soldered to it is soldered to these little points and everything just kind of jumpered with wires and stuff to it so that was how the early ones were this one's actually got a circuit board in it it probably has a similar idea but with actual board and but we went through the board repaired um the parts that were bad in it upgraded some of the parts that were older that you know with some newer parts that were uh, because the old ones were weak, and then once they got it pulsing again and working better, um, I was only getting about two or three thousand volts out of it, and the spark it would jump was barely anything. So I was like, well, transformer's bad in this thing, so I had to figure out a way to retrofit my solid state style of transformers in it, and once I did, this thing works like a dream. So, but if you've got one of these things, you know, we'd be happy to look at it for you. Uh, we work on a lot of them. Uh, we get them in, or oh, we get them in every year, but we probably get, oh, I don't, not a lot, you know, compared to some of the other stuff we work on. What we get, um, probably, uh, I would say between four and ten of these a year. Um, ten's probably pushing it, but we definitely get three or four or five a year of these International Super 98s or one similar to it. But, um, if you need any help troubleshooting, we can try that over the phone. It's really hard to troubleshoot one of these things um, unless you know exactly what you're doing and what you're needing in a unit. If you don't know how to test certain things, I would just skip it and send it here to us. Let us take a look at it, see what we can do to get you fixed up and going again. Um, but check out our website again. It's fencerfixer.com. There'll be a subscription or a description link in the description box you can click on and then uh you know like the video subscribe ask us questions call us email text whatever you prefer all our information is on our website but until we do another video how to fix something we will see you guys later and the light is flashing it's just very very dim it's probably burnt out so i might try to replace that bulb if i can figure out what kind of bulb it takes. But we will see you later.